Welcome back to Nicolandis Comic Corner Classic Class Non Classic. This is episode number 1188. And episode number 1082. Yes, the third video I've done today, and it's a Comic Corner. Like with the first one, it's reviewing two digital books. Yep. These are basically. I'm reviewing volume 6 and 7. First up, it's volume 6. Absolute carnage. Yes, this is kind of the strange thing that comes to this crossover. Yes, this book is, has a tie into it, but the first issue has nothing to do with absolute carnage. It's mostly put just Mary Jane and Peter practicing her, her part for her movie that she's going to go off for, and this issue, just a send off issue prior to her start of her ongoing series of The Amazing Mary Jane, which is going to be ending pretty soon, which I think is kind of dumb. Yep. And the issue itself also is also serves as setup for the arc that comes right after the absolute carnage storyline, with having the parents by Teresa Parker, Peter Parker's sister, who they did say in here that she met Aunt May prior to this, and I love their brief interaction. It's so great. I, I bet that May is like she's so happy the fact she has a niece. Along with a great, along with a great nephew, she's like a nephew who's really awesome to her. She also has an awesome niece as well. First, she calls him Mrs. Parker. And so she's coming at Aunt May. Well, she technically is Barry Parker's sister. So she's ever had to call her that. Yep. And you gotta thank the writer Chip Sardesky for. Now it was hinted at in the Mark Wade, James Robertson, the one shot they did. Family business. It was hinted that they were siblings, but Jeff Zeski basically he must have loved that story so much he confirmed it during his run for Peter Parker at the Spectacular Spider-Man. Yep. And well, the storyline for her is that she's basically doing the spy business, but she's after the chameleon. Yes, yeah, after the chameleon. And well. Of course, she, he, he, he misses seeing off Mary Jane, but she looks for the chameleon, and it looks like, though, that he has a wedding, he has a game ring in, her hand, in his hand. It seems as though that he was going to propose to her, which, that would have been awesome. That's just my opinion, anyways. Now, on to the tie-ins for Absolute Carnage. Now, you're probably thinking, wait, this book has got three issues missing Spider-Man, and... That wouldn't be enough. What do they do in order to make the book basically normal size and released? They put a one shot in here called Red Goblin, which Nick Spencer, I believe he himself writes. Let's see. No, actually, it's written by several writers. Nick Spencer just does just an amazing sovereign issue. It's 20 minutes now by Francisco Mina and Ryan Otterley. That's just the, just the absolute carnage tie in issues. Now, the Red Goblin Red Death issue, which is focused on when Osborne. This one's got three writers on it. Rob Fee, Sean Ryan, Patrick Gleason. The artwork is done by Pete Woods, Ray Anthony Height, and Mark Deering. Patrick Gleason's the second time I could think of he's actually written an actual story. Because normally this guy is a writer, is an artist. Yes, the first time he did this, believe it or not, was actually the Robinson and Batman series. He basically wrote and mostly drew the first half of that series. For around the first, like, nine issues, and then he left before the series even concluded. Now, as for the tie-in itself, most also, they do confirm what this guy banjo his name is. His name is The Kindred. Is it going to be follow up with here? No. Well, not really, no. He's mostly a background character. It's mostly put this two-parter. It's just focused on Norman Osborn. Yeah. Despite the fact this is a tie-in to Absolute Carnage, Peter doesn't play a role in this at all. He basically is mostly like a side character's own story. It's mostly exploring Norman Osborn's backstory. Well, not his backstory, basically his history and, well, his time briefly as, well, when he was host of Carnage. Yep, that's similar to what it is. He does get out of the of his cell after the two issues. Which leads directly into the Red, the Red Death storyline. Of course, next, of course, is 2099, which I'll get to that. Red Death. You gotta love this cover. This cover is so awesome. Yeah. 
The three stories in your great responsibility, Big Mouth, and The Wayward Darkness. And all these stories are focused on when I was born. From what I can tell during his time when he was the host of the of the of the of the Carnage symbiote. He was killing people. He was kinda of like I got like an anti hero. The second story is to put him well, he still hosts the symbiote. He of course meets up with an old col an old classmate of his who he kills because he recognizes him. Yep. The last story is him basically meeting up with Jameson, which Sim would put for this particular short thing. All this does is basically confirm what happened in Amazing Summer 800. Of, it kind of well explains that little plot point, but that's really all it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the last one just basically focuses on a bunch of kids while dealing with the whole thing with the, with the symbiote. Yeah. I gotta say that the Amazing Spider-Man issue, the 29, that was actually pretty good. Nothing really bad about it at all. Now, as for the Absolute Carnage tie-in, it's okay. It's got good artwork. But it's kind of a bit of a step down to do... Now, of all the tie-ins I reviewed for Absolute Carnage, this one is not terrible per se, but it's not as good as the other ones I read. The other ones I read are a lot more interesting than this. I give this trade roughly a, oh, I'm going to give it roughly an 8.5 of a thing. It's a bit of a step down from the last trade, which is behind the scenes. Next one. This one that was so good. $20.99. Oh, my gosh. When I saw this again, like, okay. Now, still remember Nick Spencer. Patrick Leeson is the first three issues of the storyline. 32-34. The last two issues, 35-36, done by Brazagia. Yeah, this is from Volume 5. Now, this is the return of Miguel O'Hara. Yes. Miguel O'Hara, for the first time since 2017. Yes. 2017 was the last time this guy appeared. And it had been three years. And one thing you at least got to appreciate about this storyline, it's mostly a follow-up, kind of in a way, from what happened at the end of the last series. The first story takes place in the future. We have Miguel O'Hara back in his classic suit. Yeah, he's back in his classic suit operated on by these mysterious shit people. And in present day, you just have Peter just hanging out, a bunch of, hanging out with some guys who apparently has got his own webware tech. Yes, which a lot. I, 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 when I saw this, I'm like, wait, what the heck is this doing here? I thought this stuff was all destroyed during the events of Secret Empire. Here's the thing. Now, Nick Spencer did not come up with the web web concept. That was Dan Sly who did that, not Nick Spencer. Just hanging out, we also have a brief scene where you have Teresa meeting up with Peter or she's in disguise. Yeah, she, he, he tells like, why don't you just text me? He's like, really? You think they can catch you? I can't believe those things, you think those things are private. Kind of they are. Yeah, it just basically Therese being paranoid. So, the present day stuff is simply put this. We have the chameleon meeting with the foreigner. And he basically has got something from S.H.I.E.L.D. The Infinity Formula! Wow, that's something. How the heck did he get the hands on this thing? Yeah, it's kind of strange though because... For some reason, at the Second Empire, they disbanded Shield. They could have, I don't know, restructured it, basically put it. Nope, we had to basically axe the damn agency. So, who is the spy agency in the Marvel Universe? Currently, nobody. And I don't know who exactly Teresa is working for. So, they're basically, and, and of course, Spider-Man gets involved because this is the chameleon, who's no enemy of his. He briefly fights the foreigner. The foreigner himself, he hasn't really fought him in a long time. I think the last time I can think of the foreigner showed up was actually back in Civil War One. Yeah. And, of course, he runs into Silver Sable in her sexy outfit. But, nope, this is not her at all. And then he sees a brief... In, and then we see cut to Miguel seeing Doom 2099 decimating the world. And this lasts for several pages, him breaking out of... 
of a building, which is similar to what happened in the first issue of the original 2099 comic book published back in the 90s, with him breaking out of a window and basically falling down. It's very similar to that. Mm -hmm. And we're stuck here for a little while. He basically beats the bad guys up, and we see this LMD. Of course, Teresa basically got a point ahead, and it turns out, yeah, it's a fake. And it turns out, though, and... This is something Nick Spencer kind of did a retcon here. Now, he still keeps the fact that she survived being nearly killed by the rhino. But apparently some of the debris from the, from the ship basically kind of burned her. So, and then Spiderman easily asked the question, wait, what about me teaming up with you to save your country? That was an LMD. Yep, Nick Spencer retconned it where the Silver Sable boy team went, went during the arc uh, just prior to Second Empire tired when she was free her country from this countess was an LMD. Yep. I'm like, really, Spencer? You apparently don't like Dan Slav very much that much. So you just basically kind of added a retcon on another retcon. The previous retcon, that was something Slot did, but Slot was basically retconning something that he did. This is a wreck car or something Slot did. And he was the previous writer. Like, why the heck did, did Nick Spencer thought this was necessary to establish the fact that, oh, Silver Sable basically cannot move very well. So, and then they, of course, they obviously had to explain, like, okay, then, but the whole thing about, then, if you're here, then, who was that teamed up with in your home country? It was a robot. Wow, Spencer. I get the reason why that he did that. Of why he, he decided to retcon the fact that that was actually a robot, not the actual Silver Sable. Because, and this is my personal theory, I think because people did not like that story very much at all. That was probably by far, that was Slot basically at, of course, when he was doing his previous volume. It was him running out of ideas. Like, he probably did that just to tie up a loose end. And he probably brought back Silver Sable because this is my personal theory. He probably regret killing her off. At least never really confirmed that she died. But And then she kind of confirmed she died. Then later, nope, she's alive. So yes, basically, Silver, he basically kind of redeemed Silver Sable. But confirming she was not in the actual story. Because the thing is, we have no one else with an ugly face. Yeah, because he was part of that storyline. And so that's how I, why I think he retconned this. So. And thanks to getting the family formula. And of course, well, the community working. He apparently decided to work with the Hitman. Yes. And they explained that this Hitman here. Unlike the tarantula in the previous arc, they confirmed that this hitman was actually the clone of the original. And he was brought back during the events of the clone conspiracy. Like, okay, that is recounting us now bringing, referencing that story. I actually like clone conspiracy. And my friend Tibby, he doesn't like the story very much, but I like it purely because of all the, the fact that Apparently, because Ben Riley basically resurrected a whole bunch of dead villains. I thought that was a really cool concept. And some of them were still alive. So, I get why Spencer decided to bring this character back. Because, well, he was already brought back anyway. So, why not? It only been, like... Because I think the storyline came out early this year. So, it had been roughly about four years since the storyline happened. So, it's great. We have Peter Parker in class. We have Tease of the Future. And, of course, Dr. Doom is, yes, Dr. Doom is in the storyline. Excuse me. Then we briefly see, like, M Miguel's future. And we see Captain America 2099. And fun fact about this character, when Peter David created her. See, this character, believe it or not, is not some is a character who appeared in the original 29 book that came out back in the 90s. Or the volume that, that he did, that Peter David did when the book was brought back in 2014. Nope. This character made her debut during Secret Wars. And because he created her, made her canon. Though it's a slightly different version of the character. Yep. 
And it's great that Nick Spencer decided to bring this character back because she's a great character. Yep. So, and we briefly see Doom 29 here. And we see the whole, you see this device. This is actually something that Peter and, I think it's called the Consigular, I think it is, this device that was apparently found on, the, on Peter's back later. So, yeah, Doc Doom's been shot, and he goes freaking nuts. Goes giant size and attacks the city. And then Peter gets caught in something. And he runs to Miguel O'Hare for the first time since the Spartan 29 book that ended back in 2017. Yep. So, this thing is not constant. So, he gets sort of transported to kind of present day-ish. Where a bunch of Doom bots show up in the earth. They cause basically wrecks, wrecks some damage. He, of course, goes giant size. His, his sister is there along with Dr. Frickin' Strange. Yeah, we see help that basically Peter's got help to deal with these Doom bots from Luke Cage, Daredevil, looks like Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, Dr. Strange, Miss Marvel, Miles Morales, Braun, and I think that's Viv Vision. Yeah, and of course, well, he gets help from sister, obviously. Like, okay, he's, I think he's going to start a, a war between suburbia and Latveria. He not knows he's on his own doorstep. He still has shape or anything, and of course he gets shot, but luckily he's wounded, so he'll survive. And they discover the body of the hitman. Which I think that the chameleon killed him. Yep. And of course, I love the fact that Dick Spencer referenced another storyline. This one coming out back, yeah, I believe, was the 80s. Because you just prior to Craven's Last Hunt. Referencing what happened in Amazing Spider-Man number 388. Though, he does not bring up the fact that was Harry's idea to do. The mess with his head. Yeah. And inside this little device, he sees Lyra. Who, this has been, this is someone who Miguel's looking for. Lyra is Miguel's AI, which is not in his system, but, is not in his arm, but she's here. You also see a brief image, like, looks like of, like, because it's like showing, like, alternate futures. Like, we see what looks like, we see, like, a kid, a blonde kid with the cap shield. Yeah, that's from Next Avengers. We also see MC2, which is great. Days of Future Past. <laughs> and our friend Tibby basically loves seeing MC2. Because he's a big fan of Spider of the May Park of the May Parker Spider a May Day Spider Girl. So yeah. And of course he's the chameleon who helps out like yeah, this is him. There's like Yeah, he's a fact. and of course we have sort of a in universe reference to Days of Future Past with Doc Doom firing his beam at Spider Man and I think the Chameleon. Actually, now the Chameleon it's basically Tessa. So he bl he gets blasted, but lucky enough that he think he gets blasted, but no, nope, I think it was actually just a. Yeah, so he kind of changes it where. Thanks to some time traveling. Yeah, he's basically a liar, but it's Max is fixed. So he's briefly held because he briefly lost by Doc Doom. So, yeah, it's not the problem. Tell the truth. Yeah, he was one. Him and was one shot you, and he was already dead by the time I found him. And of course, Doc Doom wrecks, wrecks crap. He wrecks the proper library, wrecks the buildings. He even decided to wreck the Statue of Liberty, which that was kind of dumb. So, and then we cut to apparently Makara Hera. Back in present day, with, with his mask damage, so he takes out his mask, and he looks like he puts on a coat, shirt, walks around, and runs into his girlfriend, who's got his baby. Yeah, I love the fact that Nick Spencer <laughs> brought this back. Wow. Bring it back to his girlfriend. I think her name was... She was also his landlady, who he fell in love with. I love the fact that he brought this character back. She's like... Miguel, and he smiles, and then we see that the device activated, probably sealed up, and then we see Silver Sable being visited by the Countess, and basically they proving what's happening, and then basically with the chameleon custody, Teresa walks away, it's like, 
oh, we we'll see something more. But well, I don't think we'll see anything more because I think next story arc is Sin's past. Not, no, not, not Sin's past. Basically, it's strengthening with the Sin Eater. Yeah, the return of this character. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that Nick Spencer basically kind of did a, a follow-up to Peter David's Spider-Man 29 book. That was by far, in my opinion, the best thing about this storyline. I think the whole thing with the Infinity Formula, of course, Silver Sable does get it, though he slowly recovers. I think that was uh, something that was, well, was okay. But I think the scene Miguel Harrigan is fantastic. My hope is, is that this eventually convinces Marwa to revive the Spider-Man 29 book because he's in present day. And he's reunited with his smoking hot girlfriend. And he's there with his baby. <laughs> Which I think is so awesome. I get the book roughly a 9.5 out of 10. Fantastic book. And that is the most recent book released for Amazing Spider-Man for trade-wise. So yes, out of all of the trades that Collecting Expansions run, only Volume 6 is a bit of a letdown. This book I thought was quite interesting. Great book. Great improvement to the last book. Okay, so that's it for the single review. If there's another comic corner today, it'd just be by sheer coincidence. Mm-hmm. Yep. But still happening today, One Piece and Case Close. I hear I keep saying that, but... Yeah, there's definitely happened to say, in the case of uh, One Piece, I'm getting close to finishing up what I want to do. I think i got about a few episodes left, so I should be able to get done probably in the next little over an hour, and I'll do case goes after that, okay? See you next video. Bye.